Hello fellow fanfiction writers and YouTube viewers. I'm Marine Brother Shran. You may know me as the author of Unbreakable Bond in the Evangelion section or My Dream My Life in Super Smash Brothers. I've created this video because something I've noticed in the fanfiction world, especially amongst juniors or inexperienced writers, is how they portray characters. And what I mean by that is, you may have noticed that some stories have an interesting idea and to your dismay though when you read the story maybe even for the first by the fir for the first couple of chapters all of a sudden you realize the characters in the story are not who you thought they would be or who you thought th they would be based on it's like it's such an extreme difference from what you know that you end up just closing the story and moving on to other sto other fan fictions because the characters weren't portrayed to a certain standard or just the way they were originally portrayed in the their original series be it a given cartoon book anime etc this video is more so like a guide and of how to portray characters some of the basics basic knowledge and hopefully this will give the more exper inexperienced and junior writers an idea of what readers are looking for when they are reading a fan fiction the things that i notice are that when they write about a character they tend to forget who they're writing who they're writing like they forget like certain characteristics, habits, beliefs, behaviors, like things that make a certain character tick, certain things that make them who they are. And and unfortunately be, the portrayal of, of what they thought was this character is a completely out of character behavior because they have some grand plan, maybe they have some idea and then they just write it in such a manner that it just becomes an out of character portrayal. So essentially, what I'm going to be talking about for the next little while are three things. Understanding the fundamentals of the characters, like understanding who they are, what makes them tick. I'll also be going over how I personally develop characters. So this is more so my take of character development and character portrayal on that matter. And then how you actually go about pacing the character development and the relationships they built with other characters. My first point, which is understanding character fundamentals. Essentially, it's who they are at the core level. It's the fundamentals. It's the building blocks of what makes a person tick. Be it, again, from any given fandom. So, let's first of all, let's say, what's a good example? Let's look at Uzumiki Naruto from the Naruto series. Um, let's look at the pre-time skip era. So, he's, he's a prankster. He never knew his family. He's also ostracized for being a Jinchuriki. He's the, being the container of the Nine Tails demon fox, but he doesn't know it, at least in the first episode. Uh, another defining trait of him is that he always strives to improve himself, no matter the opposition. Like, despite all the hardships he faces or the challenges, he keeps going. He just keeps on trucking. He's a bulldog, as it were. He just keeps bulldozing through everything that is in front of him until he succeeds. That's one another one of his defining features. He also never goes back on his word, or his way of the ninja, or his nindo, as some of you may know it. He's all so very loyal to those who he've deemed friends and family. The list goes on, but it's like traits like these. It's these aspects of who he is that makes Naruto who he is. Let's look at Ikari Shinji. He lost his mother at the age of four. His father abandoned him, so he has abandonment issues. He also, if we're going from the original anime portrayal, he also suffers from the hedgehog's dilemma. He's not good with building relationships. He's afraid of getting hurt. He's also very introspect. No, introvert, pardon me. Uh, he listens to his music a lot. He does not like people. Well, no, that's not the right way to put it, but you get the point. It, that last comment falls back to his hedgehog's dilemma. Again, these are defining traits that make Shinji who he is. What, what he's all about. Again, the list goes on, but I think, I'm hoping that I'm helping painting a picture of what I'm talking about, because, and that's the thing, is when you start a story off, especially if you're starting at certain points in their lives of the pre-established canon, you have to realize that that means that you have to operate within a certain, or should anyways, if you want, if you're interested in writing an actual really good, a good story or writing something, um, like writing an actual story where you're trying to portray your idea, you have to realize then that if you're 
to, especially if you're doing an insert at start at a certain point in a, in a given series, you have to realize who they or what they're like at that time. And you then develop it from there. The reason why I'm bringing this, I'm stressing this is because it gives you something to work with and it gives your readers something to fall back on because then they know, because like you, they probably, they are familiar with the series. They know what the characters were like at that time and they can, and then they have something to fall back on. They have something to reference. It's a little bit different if you say start from the beginning, but then at that case, or then you have to develop a backstory if you're going to make changes. If it's minor changes, usually, at least for me, I can let that slide if it's a well-established um, background. Of course, that expectation goes up and up and up as writers make more and more changes to the character. Especially if, uh, especially if it's right at the beginning, then I need to know what the heck happened. What made this character who he is, or who she is, at this point in time? And unfortunately, I've ran into quite a few stories where it's like they have a great idea, but then the, because the way they portray their characters, I put it down because I cannot read it knowing that this, the characters that are portrayed are not who they really are. And what I mean is by that is by um, what some writers do, and that I find really disappointing, is they take a character, gut everything up that is about them, um, is it, like take out everything about them, the core background, the history, everything that has been pre-established in the original canon, toss it out the window, and fill refill the shell with everything that they had in mind. Essentially, they are just a given character by name. Everything that they are, that the fans remember about them, is almost non-existent. Or they only keep the best parts and they don't keep anything else. Essentially turning them into, I suppose, like a Mary Sue or a Gary Stew. But that's another topic unto itself. And I find that to be very insulting of the character, especially if you're trying to write a more serious story. I find Again, this is a personal opinion. I find it's, just, it's a betrayal of who the characters are. Let's see. What is, like, a good example of where the characters have been tw changed a bit, but still fundamentally who they are, are the vi a lot of the stories written by Prudence Chastity for Final Fantasy XIII. One story I find that really portrays the characters like retains the core personalities though of who the characters are like the core concepts uh, there's a story written by the by Prudence Chastity called In Another World in this story lightning is portrayed a little bit differently from her established uh, series canon but the fact is fundamentally if you were to read the story you can still tell it is her she's still the stoic soldier Albeit now, she's had the benefit of growing up with the parents right from the beginning, so they don't die at some point during her early teenage years. And so therefore, she doesn't have to deal with the burden or responsibility of looking after Sarah. So she's still the soldier, she's still the warrior, but at the same time, now she's had time to actually just be a teenager, to be a girl, where she's now, where it's now a mix of the best of both worlds. When I look at it, I can still see and say it is Lightning Farron. There are other stories, though, where it's like it's such a drastic change. It's like, who the hell is this character? One good example, although this was unintentional because it's more, more so like a humor or a deconstruction, is a story called Super Robot Evangelion by Dancing Brain, where Shinji is portrayed like ev any super robot ca hero main character, where he is completely fearless and hot-blooded, where he just charges in headfirst like a superhero. He just bulldozes right through. Granted, though, that is a bit of a deconstruction, a bit of a humor story, but that is another example of a decon... Another, that's an example of being out extreme, so out of character that you look at this character and it's not based off in any way, shape, or form of the original character that the story, that the fan fiction is based around. We have this establishment that we have to know the fundamentals of the character. So then the question becomes, do we have to follow this formula from, from beginning to end? No. 
every character, every if, actually no, even a regular person like you or myself, we go through a series of events throughout our daily lives where we make minor changes to ourselves on a daily basis. We make something is something is maybe as minor as minor as oh, I I like to do this, but something just went horrible. Actually, no, that's that's a bad that's a bad way to illustrate the example. Um, oh well. For instance, I like punching things. One day I decide to be dumb and I punch a cactus without thinking. Well, I'm never going to do that again. A bit of a bad example, but I think this somewhat illustrates the point. As your story develops, the character will develop. And now, on that note, how I develop my stories is through the characters. I have a plot, though. Like I have an overarching idea of what I want the characters to go through. I have a this I have the idea of what the beginning is is and what the end. How the two bridge is another story because unto itself because essentially that's essentially me putting the characters in the situation and all I tell essentially it's like being told this is where you start. There's your end and you're given a map. You for, there's no pre-established trail. There's no pre-established path I, these characters go through. I have events that I want them to go through, but how do they reach it? Is is up to the characters themselves. Essentially, when I write, I let the characters respond. I let the characters carry the story to whatever ends they they choose. Because then, because at least for me, that's how I develop the characters. I let them grow themselves, so to speak. Granted, there'll be times where I may have to put my foot down and kind of guide the characters into to certain events because it progresses the story. That being said, I realize that it's a bit of a vague concept saying character driven. What does that mean? Like to to further kind of explain what I mean is I will take the char characters and put them say like I put them in a room with a, a number of objects. First of all, what characters do I put in? Who are in this room? Who's currently interacting with another? Do they have an established relationship? Do they are they meeting for the first time? Are they bitter rivals or are they hated enemies? So it's like, oh, I put them, I put a pair of hated enemies inside the same room. What's in the room? Oh, is there furnitures? More, more like than not, this it's probably going to get violent. They're going to start. Words are going to be thrown, um, sh shoving, maybe punches. Next thing we know, maybe they use the, the items in the room a, as weapons. Or maybe it's a couple of old friends who've ne who haven't seen each other for a long time. How do they respond? They're going to have likely going to have a conversation with one another. They're going to talk about things that they've they've done, things that they've mi things that the other has missed. Um, maybe even you make use of the furniture to sit down and just have a nice long chat. Again, actually, I'm going to fall back to Prudence Chastity story in another world. That's a good example of character development where Fang. Like I'm not going to spoil too much of the story, but essentially where the character. Fang's character um, goes through has like a very has a very debilitating issue. Uh, she she's not proud of it. She wants an operation. Whereas Lightning, on the other hand, finds this issue is just another part of who Fang is. It's a defining feature of her character. And essentially, the story, a good plot element of the a good chunk of the plot is how the two of them develop as a couple and how the two of them overcome Fang's problem and how the two of them reconcile it and eventually Fang comes to realize this is a this is not a bad thing this is just who she is this is a part of her just something that that defines her um, for those of you who are fan fiction thir Final Fantasy 13 pardon me fans I suggest you read this this is actually a pretty good read although I do um, warn you it is an M-rated story so on this note of development pacing like how long does the story take o take like all the developments that you want these characters to go through like how much of a length of time does this happen does it happen in a week does it happen in a month does it happen to happen over a couple of years and that's the thing is you have to be realistic with the development it's just like like development developing this character is like developing a real person how long would it take for a real person to develop on average mind you I'm, I'm talking general here because some people may develop faster than others and if 
the char if your character just happens to think like that, okay, cool, it's part of the character. A good example would be the Salarians from the Mass Effect series. They only have about a 40-year lifespan, so therefore, and the way their mind works, they will reconcile things a lot faster than the average human. So yeah, there's those kind of things you have to take into effect, sorry, into consideration. How well do these characters deal with their problems? And how fast do they, how fast or slow, do they reconcile the, these issues? A good example now of good character development that's still ongoing is Challenge of a Young Heart by Narthal, which is a fan fiction for Harry Potter. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything, spoil anything, but um, this is a Fleur and Hermione story where, yeah, it's yes, it's a lesbian pairing, but the story so far as it is, um, it runs between when Bobaton first arrive, well, Bobaton and Durmstrang first arrive in on Halloween to Christmas. Yes? Yes, Christmas. Around that time, like to December or like December or early January. And so far, um, in the span of three, two to three months, they've only just started their relationship, despite the fact is this author has put in almost over 100,000 words. You also need to understand that pacing is a very imp another important sp aspect of the story. Pacing unto itself, I can probably do a whole like 10 minute spiel on, but I won't. To kind of just simplify it, you need to be able to pace the story in such a way that the development like the rate of development is believable and that's another thing is are the characters you're portraying believable are they developing in a believable manner are they interacting with other people in a believable manner are they behaving with other people in a believable manner and um so just to kind of review everything that i've just been talking about for the, almost the last 15 or so minutes is first of all you do need, need to understand the fundamentals of the characters who they are what they're all about also then, once you've established that, how they how do they develop throughout your story? How do they grow as a person? And that's the thing. Having static characters, like ha staying who they are the entire time, is not going to fly. It's boring. It's static. There's nothing happening. How do they develop? How do they respond to the situations? How do they grow as a person? Just like a regular person. How does a regular person grow from, the ex from their experiences, from the things they do, like from what you and I do in our normal daily lives. How to respond to, say, like um, some sort of major traumatic event. It's the same thing. How do your characters respond to the events that you throw at them? Uh, how, do they how do they develop as themselves? How do they develop their relationships with, uh, with other characters? Then there's over how long do they develop? Do they, is it over a, a week, period of a week, a year, only a couple of months? Is it realistic? Is it unrealistic? These are just some basic considerations. This is kind of more so like a general general guide. I could possibly do an in-depth in thing if you wish. I may if you ask. This is just a very ba a basic overview of what this is all about. Sorry, of what character development is all about and some of my personal pet peeves and how I do certain things. Do understand, this is my take on the matter. You may have your own different ideas, or may you have your own pre-established ideas based off what others have said to you. All I can say is, this is my, this is what I think. These are just my, my ideas, my tips, my techniques, things that I've done. Take, take from this what you will. I hope this has been of uh, some useful help to you. If you have any thoughts, opinions, or wish to discuss this matter further with me, um, post it in the comments below, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thanks for your time. I'm Marine Brother Shran, and to you, those who are new to the fanfiction world and only have only begun to write or even just start writing their own fiction, like their own regular fiction, I wish you good luck.